Hey everyone, it's Becky here. So today is my first time after two years of social isolation that I take public transit to town. So the globe architecture on the left is Science World, and in the middle is False Creek. And yeah, beautiful day today. Spring is in the air, and finally I made up my mind to take the bus, then the sky train or metro to the old places that I used to hang around before and after work, before the pandemic, and before started graduate school in late 2019. Here's a nice heritage building, and here I just walk downstairs to this little round plaza where there's a Chinese supermarket and. Some shops, cafes, restaurants around, and here is one of my favorite lunch places. But sadly, it's shut down now because of the pandemic. And here is one of my favorite cafes, and I'm ready to go in and have a cup of latte and a little snack. It's very quiet in here. It was just a few people. Sitting around, and I ordered a chicken samosa with a cup of、um, cafe latte. And of course, I'm gonna sketch them before I eat. So I'm gonna start sketching the short, chubby little mug. So because I'm looking at the mug from almost a top view, the opening of the mug is almost a circle, very chubby oval. And now I'm drawing the rim and the very top of the milk foam. After that, I'm drawing this fern pattern, very common for latte art, and use a bit of broken lines to draw the bubbles and the texture of the foam. The bottom and the little dish. Underneath the mug, and it's going outside the page a little bit. It's okay. Just let it go. Now I am ready to draw the little plate for the samosa. It's a bit of overlapping here, and the inner line of the little plate. Now I'm drawing the triangular shape of the samosa. And again, it's going outside the page a little bit. Just let it go. It's very natural to sketch this way. Finishing the other side of the curve. Drawing the rim of the plate using long and broken lines to show the shine and give a looseness. And the surface of the samosa is pretty simple, with just a few folding lines and the burning mark from the grill. And using multiple lines to accentuate the fold, add a bit of hatching to suggest a little bit of three dimension. This samosa now is being pressed flat in the grill, so yeah, it's a very flat piece. And adding a bit of accentuation around the bottom of the little dish, and the mug too. There, and here is the finished line work. And now I'm ready to paint watercolors. The exciting part of sketching. So I just wetted the mug and plate area with clear water, and I am gonna grab some medium yellow or cadmium yellow. As you can see, I'm leaving tiny little bits of white to show the highlight of the ceramic, and blending in some brown or burnt sienna to show the shade, because it's not just flat yellow. Wetting the samosa area and grabbing some yellow ochre for the first layer. Yellow ochre is very, you know, commonly used when I'm painting food like muffins and bread. Okay, first layer for the latte is burnt sienna mixed with a little bit of orange. Nice and warm color. Burnt sienna mixed with a little bit of ultramarine blue to paint the dark areas of the latte, especially around 
the edge. Now there's more intensity and contrast. And painting the rim with leftover blue very, light, very lightly. Add a little bit, tiny little polish around the fern. And burn sienna for the burning marks on the samosa very loosely. And burn sienna for the other side of the samosa too. Now it looks a little bit more three dimensional. And mixing blue and pink purple to get this kind of gray tone for the shade on the plate just to make it more interesting. Because if we look at the shadows or the shade on a white thing, it's not just dead gray. They can be more of a lively uh, blue gray or purple gray. And now I'm just adding this purple blue on the mug and the little dish below, just to give it more three dimension with little brush strokes and a more intense layer of burnt sienna mixed with a tiny bit of blue to intensify the burning mark on the samosa. Some more purple blue for the plate here. Just give it a little bit more sharp definition. And for the shadows, just simply ultramarine blue with a little bit of pink purple. That's my recipe for shadows and same for underneath the samosa. Yeah, just some more intensity for the burning marks because watercolor washes, they tend to fade away a little bit. So we have to add another stronger layer after the previous layer is dried. Same for the top of this uh, coffee too. I'm just adding a more intense burnt sienna or brown color with less water and more paint pigment and using small little brush strokes to show the delicate surface. Now it looks more interesting and attractive too with these little brush strokes. So brush strokes are actually pretty important in watercolor painting. Here is my finished sketch of a cup of cafe latte and samosa. Now I'm gonna drink my cup of latte and eat that samosa before I start another sketch. And moving on, I'm gonna sketch the sunny day outside the window. As you can see, it's very busy with lots of people and cars. So on the other side of the street, there's a mall and a cinema. So finding a reference object is very important in urban sketching. So now I'm going to draw this foreground object. It's a pole with traffic light on top. The three traffic lights and the uh, another walking traffic sign. Here it is. Now I know where most people's top of head should be. So now I'm just drawing this lady over here. So I see the top of her head is a little bit lower than the pedestrian's traffic light. And now I'm just drawing this other traffic light pole and lamp on the other side of the street and the street sign. As you can see this pole, it looks shorter and smaller because it's more far away. And the two flags, some more traffic light in the middle of the pole. Now I'm starting to draw the mall behind, just starting with the top contour outlines, so just you know, focusing on the large shapes and curves. So just relax in this process. When drawing architectures, especially modern ones, they're very abstract and geometric. So now I'm only seeing simple rectangles and squares and just connecting one shape after another and make sure your vertical lines are straight down, you know, uh, parallel to the uh, vertical lines of your sketchbook. So it looks standing straight. Now I'm starting to draw these pedestrians. There's a lady uh, holding her dog. 
they moved away in just three seconds, so I had to do this from memory. So when sketching real people walking on the street, we can't really capture them as they walk away way too fast before we can really finish it. So a lot of memory work is needed. And now I'm just adding some more abstract shapes for the, for the mall. And I just drew the head of a man there and then he walked away way too fast. So I'm gonna connect another person's body with his head. So one funny trick about drawing people walking on the street is about, um, you don't have to draw one single person. You can just draw one person's head and then you have to connect the other part of the body uh, from another person's outfit. And adding another man over here. So just keep it really simple. The head is roughly a circle with eyes or eyeglasses. And the bodies are roughly trapezoids with arms on both sides. Sometimes the arms look shorter because the arms are folded seen from the back. And the legs, um, the thigh part is larger and the calf is thinner. So now I'm just adding all of these very simple shaped windows and doors and just a bunch of vertical lines and horizontal lines for the glass building of the mall. So as you can see, there's always ways to simplify a modern building and I think every sketcher do it differently. So this is my way. And this is also roughly a two point perspective. As you can see, the top part of the building on the left is slanting down towards the left. And the right side of the mall is, you know, going down slightly towards the right. And now I'm just adding some smaller figures by the entrance of the mall. This is another interesting way to give depth by, by drawing figures in different distances. And just adding a car here to show traffic. And another person over here and just someone sitting, just counting. So every single little figures count. So now I have a, about a dozen of different people, big and small. And just keep adding all of those simple squares of windows. And as you can see, when doing urban sketching, we can also use solid black um, to color in the hair or the pants of those people or some parts of the, uh, some parts of the objects. Some windows, they look darker because they're in the shade away from the sunshine. Just adding this uh, building behind the mall. And finishing drawing the bottom of the mall on the left by adding a car and another car parked behind sidewalk and I think I capture the energy of the street scenery just the last bit of uh, just add another car there and that's it for the line work and I'm going to take some sips of coffee before moving on to painting watercolors here we go time to paint watercolors and as always I like to paint the sky first so just adding a little bit of cerulean blue mixed with a little bit green. I like this light turquoise color. A little more cerulean blue for the top. The top of the sky is looking a little bit more solid compared to the bottom. And that gives a little more interest. And just wetting the, uh, all of the buildings and the street area with clear water. Now I'm just adding this kind of like an underpainting. This is kind of like giving the atmosphere of a sunny day because the sun is shining on a lot of parts of this building, especially on the left. And the color I'm using right now is medium yellow and also mix in a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of lemon yellow too. So three kinds of yellows. Just play around with the yellows. And same for the street. A large areas of the street is covered by the sunshine. So a mix of shine, sunshine and shadows that I'm going to add the shadow color later. So this kind of underpainting really gives a kind of um, unity 
to a scenery. And it's not difficult to do. Now, second layer, I just grab some orange mixed with burnt sienna or brown to paint the exterior of the building. That's this brown tone because under the sunshine, the brown looks warmer. And the part of the building on the right hand side is this kind of yellow brown too. So just lay the color nice and loose. And now it's time to add some contrasting colors. So I just mix um, blue, ultramarine blue, and a little bit purple. And also mixing green, just play around with blue, green, and pink purple to get these colder tones to paint the glasses on the buildings. So if you look at the glasses during the uh, daylight, they don't look just gray. They can be very reflective of all kinds of cold colors. And now I'm just using purple blue to paint the shade on the side of the building. A lot of observation skills. A little bit of a shade for this side. Some more shade color inside the windows. So in between each three-dimensional structure, the brown building has a colder brown tone. So I just mix um, a little bit of um, ultramarine blue into burnt sienna or brown to make the brown look colder for the shade of the building. And just keep playing around with blue mixed with uh, pink purples to paint the colors of the glasses during daylight. So if you look at windows during the day, they're not just the boring kind of gray. They're very lively. There's so many ways for the artist to make, um, to mix their own grays. There's this uh, greenish gray, bluish gray, and purplish gray. And now I'm just adding this, um, my own gray tone for parts of the street, especially here in the foreground. And I'm also keeping the painting really clean by not really touching some of the uh, bright yellow parts because I just want to leave it nice and bright to show the sunshine. Nice and clean. And keep adding more stronger and solid colors, especially for this part, the middle part of the mall is in dark shade. And for the right side, in between the structures, And now I'm just grabbing some fresh green to paint the pole with the traffic light, the traffic light. This is yellow, nice and bright. <laughs> and just wrapping up this sketch with some teeny tiny colors here and there in between those rails is actually the sky area, a little bit shade for the uh, building behind them all. And I decided not to color those people because I don't really remember what those people were really wearing. Most of them were actually wearing gray or black pants and outwears. So yeah, so it's not really interesting to just paint those figures with blacks and grays. Leaving them white really gives a sense of, of these people quickly wa walking by in a few seconds. So it's really powerful to leave them white this way. Less is more and you know, just leave, leave it for the viewer's imagination. and just adding tiny little bits of red for the flakes over there. And that's it, that's my finished sketch. It took me about half an hour. And for the space on the bottom, I decided to quickly sketch some more people. And because most of them were wearing blacks and whites and grays, I decided not to paint them and just paint the street with this golden sunshine and some leftover blues for their shadows, nice and loose. 
And here is the finished look of my R journal spread. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. I will see you again very soon. It's time to take the train to go home. And here's the view from the Sky Train or the Vancouver Metro. We can see the mountains in the distance and the cityscapes below with some factories and warehouses and yeah, community centers, apartment buildings. So have a great day. See you next time.